So Gigi, Annabelle, all yours because we have the arrival now of Mr. Daniel Medvedev. Thank you, Russ. You can hear the countdown, the heartbeat. It heads to one, and we will get the introductions for the second night match on the Rod Laver Arena. Round one action. Please welcome from the United States of America, Marcus Giron. Out steps the 29 year old, 5 foot 11. Last year, lost in the first round to Rafa Nadal. So the draw comes out this year, and he gets Daniel Medvedev. There we go. So he's back on the Rod Laver Arena. Still and a few spare moment. seats as people Australian take a break Open after the first seed, match. Daniel Medvedev. And two-time Australian Open finalist. He's won himself some fans and some friends out in Australia. 26 years of age now, Medvedev. Six foot six inches tall, but I think key there and something we'll get stuck into is he's the seventh seed. February last year, he was the world number one. He slid down. He's actually the world number eight. But he's been bumped up a space with the absence of the world number one, Carlos Alcaraz. So plenty to talk about ahead of this one. We're going to have commentary for you. Now, this is in the little chunk of the draw. This is the first quarter of the draw. We've seen Nadal go through. Also in that side of the draw, we've got Shapovalov. We've got Corded. John Millman, who had a wild card, he's gone through as well today. Sonna goes in there. Her catch is in there. So we're just, we're building things up in this little section of the draw. I'm very happy that Annabelle Croft alongside me. And I thought Annabelle just quite interesting as they made their way out. They have the camera that follows them down that corridor of champions. And Marcus Groot, he didn't know where to look because he couldn't look straight yeah. ahead. So he was up, down, and he looked to his right and he saw the name of Novak Djokovic and to his left. He was quite sure what to do. Yeah, it was quite interesting, wasn't it? I was trying to assess whether I thought he looked nervous or did he look really <laughs> relaxed, but his eyes were Guys, darting around all over the place. Welcome to Melbourne, just said, a few reminders. We have the towel boxes in every corner. And he was Blue is for taking you, it all in. is for you. To, to and think about as you're making your way out to play, you know, the former finalist from last year. And you have the heart beat and then you have to wait for your name. So we're just going through the housekeeping which you could hear the electronic the and line so calling, your shot corner. clock of 25 seconds, questions? towel baskets, no Another questions? Heads That's lovely. Heads. Heads. Garone heads. calls heads. heads Here we go. It's heads. Receive. receive. Take a picture, please. Well, oh, that was lovely, nice and clear. He said, I'll receive. Medvedev said, oh, I'm going to stay the side I'm at. They're going to have a little photo, a bit of a discrepancy. And height between the two of them is six foot six inches Daniel Medvedev five foot eleven Marcus Garone and if we start Annabelle with Daniel Medvedev finalist here last year but I mentioned then he was the world number one really that final affected him to the point he didn't reach a Masters final or Grand Slam final after that and he tumbled down to world number eight yeah, it was a strange year last year for him, wasn't it? And I don't know if you remember Gigi at the end of the final last year, where remember he was two sets to love up against Rafael Nadal. He had real opportunities to take a second Grand Slam title. Of course, he won the, the US Open a couple of years back as well. But he came off court and before the press conference started, he sort of said to the press, I want to just say a few words to you all. And he gave this great long spiel about how he'd been a boy with all these childhood dreams of being a pro. And he sort of talked through the journey of that process. But he said, I just want to say to you all, a part of that boy's dreams were lost today. And he said, I'm not going to say any more about it. So he didn't really divulge what more was going through his mind, but clearly it was quite an emotional time. And I think he'd been very disappointed with how the crowd had been with him in that final. I think he felt they were very unfair towards him. And of course, before that, Gigi, he'd always been a bit of a villain, hadn't he? he I'd always called him the pantomime villain who'd enjoyed taking on that role. He really didn't mind if people were booing him. We always remember him at the US Open when he was really taking on the crowd. But clearly underneath that facade, there was a bit more of a um, vulnerability there. And I feel like that, I don't know, I'm not quite sure where he would say he's Three at now if minutes. he was asked about that press conference, but you could certainly look back at 2022 and say, well, it wasn't a great year for him. And it was strange because he sort of cultivated the villain yeah, image. Totally. And so with that, you're going to get the booze. Added to that, largely people that come up in these stadiums against a Roger Federer, Novak, Rafa Nadal or Roger Federer, let's say those two, you're going to be the underdog and you're going to be the one that they probably don't want to win. 
Yeah, and, and also, as you say, he used to stoke it, didn't he? I mean, at that US Open final, he basically said to the crowd in one of the previous uh, matches, um, and it was a late night New York crowd, and he basically said, thank you very much, all of you, because you, you go helped me. Tonight, yeah. you'll you think of me. You'll think of me because <laughs> you helped me win this because of the way you treated me. I was fueled by that, and I'm, you know, I'm standing here the champion because of you lot out there that fueled me. So he did things in the reverse psychology, really, but... Um, you know, I think he's a much loved character. I love watching him play and I love Two his character. Minutes. I think he brings so much personality onto the court, but uh, he's complex, isn't he? He's incredibly bright. We know he's sort of a real chess player. His parents kind of introduced him to lots of books and uh, plays and authors. And, you know, he's a really deep thinker and I find him absolutely fascinating and clearly his unbelievable competitor on the court. But, um, you know, we'll have to see where his tennis is at because I think he wants to get off to a good start this year in 2023. And I remember he's been in two finals here, hasn't he? Yes. And, um, he has. you forget that. He's actually been in four Grand Slam finals, but of course winning one of them, so three that he didn't win. But there's a lot to him. Yeah, there certainly is. And, and added to that, I think a big shift for him was in October of last year, he became a dad to a little girl. His wife, Daria, gave birth to a little girl, and he said that unearthed emotions in him he said he felt that he's quite a cold person doesn't really show many emotions and i think we've seen that on court when he went on that incredible breakout run on the hard courts he was winning title after title and giving you nothing One and minute. he said suddenly there's this little bundle of joy and all these emotions that he'd never had to deal with before. Yeah, well, I think, you know, for him probably becoming a dad for the first time, sometimes it can put the little piece of the jigsaw sort of puzzle in, can't it? And it can make you realize that, uh, you know, you have your time out there on the tour and it's not going to last forever because this little bundle of joy that he's going to go back to has no clue about his tennis life. And actually he has to put that to one side and all that anger sometimes that's shown on the court, you know, it means absolutely nothing when he comes home. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I'm sure it will give him all sorts of different different emotions and to view tennis differently and to maybe put it into a, a box. I mean, we've yes. heard Andy Murray talking about that, haven't we? And Novak Djokovic and Federer and what have you. Well, when you used to be, you play an individual sport, you're used to being very selfish, especially at the top end of the game. You need a however many hours sleep, you've got to eat at this time. A newborn baby doesn't care. No, <laughs> that goes right out of the window. <laughs> They're just going to cry and that's, and that's it. So there's a complete, I remember when Taylor Fritz was, I mean, he was a lot younger and he got married and he had a baby and there'd have been all this hype about Fritz, but it took him a couple of years really to sort himself adjust. out Absolutely. to adjust and we're now starting to see that potential and I know there are very different stages but it is a big adjustment oh it's a massive adjustment and it's just trying to compartmentalize it isn't it and as you say you know we know that tennis players and all sports people they have to be selfish to be able to do what they do and they're in this tunnel and they're just going about the business everything revolves around them but as you say, everything in terms of preparation and the timing towards when you're going to eat, when you're going to practice, when you're going to make sure you digest that food, get some treatment and then get ready for a match. Everything about your day is geared to that, including your sleep patterns. And, um, you know, not easy to factor in a baby. So, I mean, I remember Roger Federer having to take sort of a, I mean, a whole floor of a hotel practically, didn't he? Just to sort of be able to get all the nannies and all the Wouldn't that you know, be amazing sleeping arrangements. Nannies. The way you say nannies, imagine if we could just travel with, them one. with plural. I know we had twins. <laughs> But imagine just taking a whole floor and Perfect. having none. It makes things easier, doesn't it? Little hard to sleep. Yeah, exactly. Get to get to sleep. Everyone's had their sleep. In terms of the win predictor, 83%. They do it before every match in the Australian Open. 83% in favour of the man you're hearing serving now, who aces out wide, Daniel Medvedev. Now he's up against Marcus Garone. It's the second career meeting. They first met at Cincinnati in the hard courts, 2020. Medvedev came through comfortably in straight sets, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. Giron, 56 right now in the world in the rankings, not his age. Has been as high as 49 in the world. That was April last year. He's. We were talking about this, Annabelle, before they came out on court. I mean, physically, they're completely different beasts. And while you have the tall, lanky Medvedev, who has the nickname of Octopus, very different in what we get from the American. I mean, they couldn't be more contrasting, could they, in terms of physiques? As you say, very gangly, tall, sort of bean poly, you know, uh, Daniel Medvedev, seven inches difference between what him and then the very stocky, strong physical side of Giron, but also very strong legs. And as we know, he's had a couple of surgeries, but he's overcome that. And for someone who's had a couple of surgeries, uh, right hip back in 2015, left in 2016, his legs are very strong and he moves well for some who's had to cope with that. Yeah, wow, that was a huge winner from Medvedev. 
That was a very comfortable hold for Daniel Medvedev Brilliant. to love in the first game. Makes it look so effortless. This very unorthodox style. When you speak to coaches, they say, well, you wouldn't coach it, but it's very effective. It is very effective. And, you know, it's the way he kind of hunches up his shoulders on the backhand side. And he, I would call it like a shovel shot. And it really looks like a bit of a slap, doesn't it? And he shovels that backhand, but you can't read it. It's very low, you know, the trajectory over the net and rifles it through the court. And, you know, he, he can play with open stance. He can defend from quite an open position quite far back in the court. But, uh, you know, the ground strokes are phenomenal. And then the forehand is, I call it like a curly-whirly forehand. I mean, it's an odd-looking shot. It describes but, it perfectly. But it's odd. And as you say, you wouldn't necessarily coach it. But when that racket hits the ball, it's, it's potent. It, it certainly is. You're with tennis breakfast. It sort of turns into tennis brunch around this time because it is 11 o'clock on a Monday morning. It's day one. Throughout the course of the show, we will round up everything that's been going on. I believe a little bit later we'll be hearing from Cam Norrie, who came through against Luca Van Asch in straight sets in his first row match. For two Brits to go through today, we lost three darts. Draper and Edmund and we've got Evans and Murray to come tomorrow but Marcus Garone so important to try and get something in this first game but he's not going to get that much joy if he's going to try and go toe to toe with Medvedev from the baseline. Yeah and also just looking at that first point on his own service game he looks nervous Gigi I think you can tell just physically it's not free he was really kind of uh, almost jerky motion on that service motion which you can always tell is uh, the nerves and that missed forehand just doesn't look smooth I was watching and listening to an interview with Garone's coach and they were talking about the build-up and the lead-up tournaments and, and coming through and getting to the stage. He got to the quarter-final in Auckland where he lost to Cameron Norrie Garone, second round in the first of two Adelaide tournaments. And, and the coach's words were, we know that against Medvedev got to be aggressive and has to try and use the serve and volley when possible. Yeah, I think that is always a good tactic against Medvedev. But I think this court's pretty quick, isn't it? Which again is why if you can serve volley well, then you're going to get some joy with it. But also up against someone as big a server as Medvedev is and the way that he hits those ground strokes with the depth, it's pretty tricky. It is a mismatch, but as we've seen at Grand Slams, especially the first of the year, if you can get in there early, if you can get under the skin of the top seeds early as they are still trying to settle in, as they go back end to back end, now the forehand swish and the miss from Medvedev. Yeah, from what I understand, you know, listening around to what people say about Giron, they say, you know, because he was a little bit late breaking through, but once he got that breakthrough, you know, he's such a great worker. He's got a great work ethic on the court and on the practice court, very hungry for success and will not be beaten, you know, in terms of his effort out there until the very last point is played. He just always dreamed of being a pro. He loves the lifestyle, loves to be out there and he will just give it absolutely everything. And of course, for him, this is a big moment, isn't it? It doesn't get to play on big center courts that often. A huge packed court, first Grand Slam of the year, facing a former number one, a Grand Slam winner. It's 30-15 on the Garonne serve. Again, they go toe to toe from the back of the court, backhand to backhand, double hander to double hander, into the net goes Garonne, and it levels up at 30. Or Garonne said if it wasn't tennis, which is in his blood, he would have been a doctor. Really? Yeah, how interesting. There we go. I wonder what he would specialise in. Uh, Hip surgery, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. He's had a couple. How interesting. Yeah, just the first glances that we're seeing of the way that Garone kind of hits the ball. He is very solid and consistent, but you can see there's not a lot of flair there and also he doesn't have huge power where he's going to really overpower Medvedev from the back of the court. 30 all serve out wide. Garone drops a little bit short, draws Medvedev across the backhand side, then pushes it long. He knows it's got to be that good. He doesn't quite make it in his break point, Medvedev. Yeah, and also the serve isn't huge, is it? He's tending to just spin those, even the first serves into play. And it's always fascinating where Medvedev stands to receive serve. So far back in the court, even for a serve like this, you know, you can see he's well, well back behind that baseline. Break point, Medvedev pushed back into the backhand, gets himself repositioned, the Russian. It goes backhand, cross court again. This is the backhand to backhand, cross court to cross court, redirects up the line from Groen, back up the line and deep and too deep 
from there. Vanilla got a first little fist pump from Gru. He's like a, he's like, I know he's 5 foot 11, so saying little doesn't seem quite right, but compared to Mevedo, he's like a little ball of muscle. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's very muscular and he's certainly been pumping some weights in the gym, hasn't he? And he's got that, what, what we first saw with Nadal, the sort of cut off sleeves and all the bulging biceps there. I mean, he looks like he eats a lot of spinach, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> An awful lot. Very Popeye-like. Very Popeye-like. Everything sort of popping out. <laughs> Juice. <laughs> Deep ball. Just clipped the inside edge of the baseline from Garone. Garone is all in black. Black baseball cap the wrong way around, so the peak down his neck. Let's that ball drop a little bit too low. That was the moan, the sigh of Garone as he dumps it into the net to hand another point to Medvedev. Yeah, that would just feel like a wasted shot there. He just turned the racket face over a little bit early in the swing and didn't really release on it. And... Yeah, you can see he's just letting out a big scream after that one. Coming up to five minutes on the clock, and as we've touched, it's so important for him to try and hold here, but it's break point down for a second time. He's missed the first serve out wide, so he slams that forehand away. The ball girl collects it. We're getting a lot of close-ups of his face on our screens, and he could actually pull off a double, I think, for Roger Federer's brother. Oh, hang on. Right, here we go. Doubles are welcome. If you think a tennis player looks like a famous actor or someone else, do let us know. Hashtag BBC Tennis or at Five Lives for inside out forehand from Groan, who's break point down for a second time. The backhand sits up for Mevlu. Ooh, who doesn't make the connection he would have wanted, and the game continues. But not that I don't believe has a brother, but if he does have one, I think that is the one like slight problem Garone. there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the eyes. eyes. Yes. Yeah, it's the eyes, isn't it? Yeah. Here we go, we found Federer's long lost brother. I'm just sort of staring at him now. It's the eyes and it is. It's, it's identical, it's definitely think? the eyes and the eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you agree or disagree with us, do let us know. Cuts the angle on the serve, then he drops it short going up the line. He's got Medvedev on the stretch, he's at the net. Medvedev goes for the pass and he gets it. Oh, that was a shame for Garon, wasn't it? Because actually you mentioning him being urged to come forward by his camp. It was a little bit hesitant up there, and yet he was in a good position, but he almost pulls his racket away when he's up here. Didn't do enough with the first volley and pulled the racket away on the second one. Remember, they're finding the passing shot. So we've given Roger Federer a brother. He has a sister. Not a brother. Or he could have one. Long lost. Never know. Breakpoint opportunity number three for Daniel Medvedev. Serve out wide inside the baseline, Grown being aggressive, but now he's pushed back. He runs around the backhand, drops the inside out forehand short, drags Medvedev in with the backhand. It loops it long and we continue. Yeah, that was a little bit sluggish getting up to that short ball. It didn't come through the court. Medvedev didn't expect that. <laughs> Couldn't quite get underneath it. Losing control there. Juice, the lights have just gone out. <laughs> in our room. I think it's because we haven't moved around enough. Ah, is I don't, that what it is? It, it might be, unless someone's just decided that's it and pulled the plug, <laughs> which would be a worry on day one. Juice. Juice number three, game number two, first set, second match of the night session. And it's an opportunity uh, number four for Medvedev. Yeah, and Garone's getting a little bit frustrated with that forehand. He looked across at his camp and he's just shadow swinging to show them what he should have done. But he looks a bit stressed on that side. And I just get the impression that Medvedev is going to sound that side out and test it quite a bit. Will it be fourth time lucky for Medvedev? No, it won't. You heard the roar from Garone. A good serve down the tee. And what you're going to get at the end of this, if Garone can hold, they're going to get the relief from the American. You'll get the frustration from the Russian. It was a much better first serve, much more pace and power on it, good accuracy. Another good serve, now he comes forward to serve and volley, that's what he needs to look to be doing, it's what he does, he gets the point and it's game point. Yeah, I think the nerves have just shaken free actually in the last couple of points, he looks way more comfortable and uh, just the movement flowing, better serving, I bet that pace has gone up significantly. Maybe he's channeling his Roger Federer. Game point to get on the board. Already the sweat down the back of the neck of Garone and beads of sweat on his forehead as he serves that wide and misses. Pats that ball away to the ball girl at the net. Takes the ball from the left-hand pocket of the sleeveless black top, black shorts, black baseball cap, white socks. Serve. 
cuts that serve. The backhand cross court and flat from Medvedev. Medvedev still on the backhand side through the middle of the court. Forehand up the line from Garone. Garone with a double handed backhand. Game point for the American. The whipped forehand cross court from Medvedev. Medvedev ramping things up into the corner. Garone lets rip, misses, and the game continues to juice number five. Yeah, once again, he's shadow swinging on that forehand side and uh, just yes. not able to keep up with that pace that came through with Medvedev. It's such an unusual shot, the Medvedev forehand. And when he decides to unleash it, and the way he can change directions, it's it's an awkward shot. A little bit late on that. Medvedev's lead up was a semi final showing the first of the two Adelaide events. Adelaide lost to Novak Djokovic in straight sets 6 3, 6 4. Backhand is in play, it is juice. It's the second game. Short ball for Medvedev, who clips the top of it, drops it short. The backhand up the line from Garone, who plays the backhand volley. It floats up, but he knows it's gone wide and he knew it, and he's so annoyed. Well, once again, yeah, even though he was in a good position, yeah, Gigi, he just looked a bit hesitant up there. It's almost like he's having to play outside his comfort zone when he's up at the net. It's definitely not his natural game up there, I don't think. Had plenty of opportunity on that backhand volley. Fifth break point opportunity for Daniel Medvedev, who just asked for Grown to wait for a second. Medvedev has a red top white shorts white socks he also has his logo new for the season so he's still with lacoste but you can see on his clothing a tiny little medvedev logo it's the shape of a man made up of his initials being the d and the m being the left and the right side of the man you'll notice it on himself and gilles Sivara, his coach as medvedev looks to get the break forehand pushes growing deep soaks up the pace growing growing with the forehand on the stretch back into the center of the court into the net the come on from the american and on we go well, Medvedev just missing the odd forehand as well, isn't yes. he? Sort of worked the point quite well. That ball was quite high and uh, he was looking for that down the line forehand. Opportunity was there to really unleash it, but just turn the racket face over too early in the swing. 12 minutes on the match clock, 11 minutes in this second game. Wow, it's an important game, isn't it? Psychologically for both of them. Grown looking to bring up another opportunity to close out the game he stretched Medvedev out of court he then drops the ball short it's patted up the line from Medvedev double hand a backhand from Medvedev the double hand of the American they keep trading the backhands cross got deeper from Medvedev Medvedev goes back and he runs around inside out but it drops short from Garon Garon with a double hand a backhand into the middle again the slice from Medvedev he draws the American in who nets over the highest part of the net and it is break point number six yeah, smart play from Medvedev, just throwing in that choppy slice down to that forehand, which has been leaking a few errors. Never easy when a player is just changing up the sort of spins and paces and it just got another error out of that side. And it's just showing us already how much harder it is for him to get through his service game early in this match than it was for Medvedev. He just steamrolled through and probably will for quite a few of the service games. So, so important that Garone can try and hold on here. But he's break point down for a sixth time. He places that inside out forward. Didn't put any pace on it. Now double-handed backer for the Americans. Just sort of placing these balls, keeping them in. He doesn't want to give Medvedev the pace to work with. Push back, Garone, who redirects up the line. Forehand cross caught on the stretch. The squeaky shoes are those of Medvedev. Just placing this ball, isn't he, Garone? Just keeping it in. Clips the top of the net. Backhand cross caught from Medvedev. Inside that. Now he adds a little bit to it, Garone. Garone then places the ball again. Drops it short. He's not giving Medvedev that pace, but he overhits it. It broke down, Medvedev gets the breakthrough on the sixth time of asking and he breaks for two love. Yeah, I mean, that was a tough game to get that break. I'm sure Medvedev felt he could have got the break much, much earlier, but I felt like that last point was very passive from Garone, wasn't it? He really pulled all the pace off the first serve. He went down to 161 kilometers an hour, whereas some of them had been up at 200, 187. He just pushed that first serve in, and then the forehand was getting very pushy, no pace on it, and he really Please didn't go after that ball, and I'm not sure he's going to beat Medvedev with that Players kind of uh, tactical you. style. So Daniel Medvedev has the early break, leads by two games to love. Oh, we have lights again. We can see each other. Didn't know if we had to stand up and wave our arms around just to get some movement. Well, apparently that doesn't work from oh. what I can see. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure where they turned off. Medvedev looking to stay comfortable on serve. All business already covered in sweat as he sort of sweeps his short brown hair to one side it's plastered across the front of his head 
too deep on the serve out wide. 14 of his 15 singles titles have come on hard courts, Medvedev. He's a fearsome opponent on the hard courts. Earlier, we heard Rafa Nadal ask if the ball kids could bring his towel to him because he said, if I've just played a big point, 25 seconds, this court is so big, I don't have time to get out there and get the towel. Yeah, that's a really good point. But the rules have changed and the ball girls and boys are not allowed to hand the towels to the players under any circumstances. 15. Remember, they're putting a lot of weight on that shot, getting the depth. Just too hot for Grown to handle. Well, that's going to be the key, isn't it? Just uh, keeping an eye on direction changes. You've got to be quick to that towel. You see, Garone, it's sort of like a speed test. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? That the space around the centre court is so enormous, isn't it? That he's got a very good point, Nadal. If you've got to keep on uh, chasing down the towels that's so far away. Some use it, some don't, some rely on it. Heavy forehand into the corner from Mevedev, then switches it cross court, drops it a little bit shorter, comes in for the volley. Mevedev, he's at the net. It's not where he's most comfortable, but great work from Garone right into the body, low and into the body of the Russian. Yeah, Mevedev looked very uncomfortable out there, and I, I think that's the one area that you feel that he really, really does need to put some work in with the volleys. Even though he's not afraid to get up there, he's never that comfortable. And Garone, really smart play. He sort of flattened out that attempted passing shot, made that volley a little bit awkward. Break, back, point, save with a big yeah. serve down the tee. Medvedev to the back of the court, gathers the ball, so quick use of the towel. 15 seconds left on the shot clock, 25 allowed. Medvedev's pretty quick. Twenty six year old now hammers the serve down, misses down the tee. Ball boy scoops up that ball, Garone back into position. Stepping inside the baseline for that return, Garone on the forehand side, going cross court, it's juice. He's had a break point opportunity. Ah. Oh, just misses, and he can't challenge because it's electric line calling. He will get a close call replay. Oh, that's cruel, isn't it? Oh. He hit it so well. And he was celebrating. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, wonder, what? I reaction. can't even see the gap. Oh, you need glasses on to try and see that gap. Wow. Oh. <laughs> no one can believe it. But there is no challenge system. Oof. It's going to need a triple zoomer to see that one. So Medvedev is able to consolidate his break. Three love in the early stages. And Marcus Garone, look, he held in there well. He survived six break points before eventually Medvedev got that breakthrough. He had a break point opportunity there. He wasn't far away from, from getting a second. But the problem is, this is after three games and against someone like Medvedev, it's not going to get any easier. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because you know that a player like Medvedev, as we saw with, with, with Sliontek, you know, these top players, they're, they're human and they have some early nerves in the first part of these events. But if they can get their teeth stuck into a match and start to run with the scoreline and start to be a front runner, they can steamroll through. And, uh, you know, that was such an important second game of the match, wasn't it? Long drawn out uh, game just to try and settle the nerves. But, you know, and the other thing is players that are playing out on these big show courts and a night feature match, you want to entertain the crowds as well. You know, there's that factor involved as well, which adds extra pressure to any player going out there. They know there's a packed stadium out there. They want a show. And at the moment, he'll probably feel like, mm, you know, I need to make more of this. He has the air conditioning unit, which is basically a pipe coming out Time. of the box. And he's just hovering his hands over it. Yeah, need that. Do you think it actually does much? I always feel, it's, do you know that they look similar to the, you know sometimes you get those hair dryers in hotels yeah. that look like that and they don't do anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. You just think, well, I'm not going to use that because that's it's not like, going to dry it's my like hair. hours. I, I kind of 
get the same feeling when I look at those. Well, it depends how cold it is. If it's really nice cold air, then actually just to have that on your face, on your neck, maybe Please, to dry out the hands a little bit, then definitely it, it would quickly. do something. Big test now after that 12-minute game in which he was broken for Thank Marcus Garone. New sweatbands for Medvedev. I think he's realised that conditions are pretty humid and sticky out there. So if he's not going to make it to the towel after each point, he can use the sweatband. So Marcus Grone, who came through the college system, represented UCLA 2012 and 2014. Inside the baseline, off the return goes Medvedev. Medvedev with the backhand cross court to the backhand, sort of took a swish at that Garone as he scampers the forehand side, goes up the other wing. He's moving Medvedev from side to side. Medvedev settles with the backhand through the middle of the court. Forehand swished into the corner. Squash shot from Medvedev. He's got Medvedev on the ropes. He's behind the Melbourne sign. The Russian, can he make it pay now? Can he finish it off, Garone? He goes forehand cross court. Medvedev's back up on the baseline, pushing the ball deep. This is the first point of the fourth game. On the angle goes Medvedev, into the net goes Garone. Well, that kind of point's quite a crushing psychological point for Garone because he was on top of the rally, as you said, he was aggressive, he was moving Medvedev into the corners and you felt like a couple of times when he'd got Medvedev uncomfortable and defensive, he needed to really move forward and sneak up there. But Medvedev is uh, very deceptive the way he moves and how he defends points when he's off balance. He then really worked himself back into that point. Very efficient, the way he moves around the court. If you just watch his footwork, you know, the cross step and you know, the open start sometimes on the backhand to defend. And he looks like he's hardly having to take too many steps just to kind of calmly, you know, just swipe through the ball. And he's, he's almost like watching a metronome, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. And he's also hard to read. I remember when he had that breakthrough year, we kept saying, well, he must be tired. He looks tired. And after two points, he looked exhausted. And yet three hours later, he's still going. Yeah, very, very competitive. Takes this serve really early. Medvedev is inside the baseline. He's staying up on the baseline now. 15 or Medvedev scampers. It's Medvedev you can hear as he strikes the ball. There again. Backhand cross court and deep. Medvedev again swishing it into the corner. He went back behind Garone so he couldn't reposition himself. And again he looks at his box and says, I didn't miss by much. No, he's looking a little stressed out there. And he'll want to get himself up on that scoreboard soon just to kind of settle down a little bit because there's a lot of looks across towards his camp. And uh, you can always tell when a player's feeling uncomfortable and they're having to keep zoning in there. 15.30, the door opens a jar for the Russian former world number one. Now sitting at number eight, he's a seventh seed here. Inside in forehand, cross court on the angle from Medvedev. That was a beauty. Medvedev opens up the court, goes cross court. Garone gets himself back, plays the forehand, cross court and deep. The backhand placed very deep by Garone. Medvedev gets to it. Medvedev again, those squeaky shoes, goes backhand, cross court. Into the net goes Garone. He was worn down by the Russian who has break points. Well, again, just incredible defensive 15, skills from Medvedev. Garone shot deep into that forehand corner. And again, a 16-shot rally there was really on top of the rally. And yet, once again, he's been worn down. And you sort of think, well, he's trying to be aggressive. He's not winning the points when he's being passive. So, you know, he's going to start to psychologically wonder what he's got to do tactically out here to, to beat Medvedev. Medvedev standing a long way back, gulping in the oxygen himself. Break point opportunities for a double break in this first set with Tennis Breakfast. Listening to the voice of Annabelle Croft, who's with us in the commentary box today. Day one of the Australian Open. Kyrgios has withdrawn. If you're just, I suppose if you're just waking up, but if you're just waking up at 11.30, that is a decent line for a Monday. 15.40, Medvedev scoops up the backhand, cross court, sits short. Medvedev again with the backhand, deep to the backhand of Garon. This is Game the favoured exchange, but it's long from the American. And that is a double break and a four love comfortable lead for Medvedev. Medvedev yeah, he's means. really starting to open four up the lead here stuff. in this first set just 24 minutes on the clock and uh, already at four love and i'm fascinated by just going back to that return position Gigi. that return of serve he's just hit he's so far into the right hand corner of the court to receive and yet it's such an amazing return straight down the middle with impact down the middle with depth and then it's just a couple of steps to just reposition and suddenly the point is nullified and then restarted and then he ends up winning it He's a tricky animal, Daniel Medvedev. For love, which is why he has been so successful. Grand Slam champion winning the US Open. A couple of finals here, as we've mentioned. He was number one for 16 weeks when he took that number in February of last year. And he leads for love against Marcus 
Garon very deep from the American pushes him back Medvedev with the backhand down the line the forehand is switched cross court on the stretch Medvedev can't get back into position couldn't cover enough of the court to reposition himself and that is a good point against the serve of the Russian for Marcus Garon another 20 shot rally this is pretty bruising He's only been on court for 25 minutes both players sucking in the oxygen, reaching for their towels or wiping away sweat with the sweat band. Some brutal points from the back of the court. And on that occasion, it was the 29-year-old American who came out on top. Says with his coach that they're trying not to focus too much on results. It's more about executing what they've been working on. Not 15 serve out wide. And one thing they've been working on is Medvedev goes back behind with the one-two punch off the serve is to dealing with the nerves and staying in the moment. But Medvedev, very comfortable to this point. All the effort that Marcus Grown has put in, he's got nothing on the scoreboard to show for it. Tennis breakfast with you. Day one will be your alarm call for the next couple of weeks. And there's going to be a couple of earlier calls. We had one today with the Drape and Nadal match. And tomorrow, it might be a little earlier call for you. 5 a.m. It's going to be Andy Murray against Matteo Berrettini. We're going to pick up that match and that will maybe, could be, might well be going on into tennis breakfast. So it will start at 7 a.m. So don't worry if you can't be with us from 5 as Medvedev aces down the tee. We'll bring you up to date with everything that's gone on. But if you are working late or you can't sleep or you love Andy Murray or Matteo Berrettini, then 5 a.m. is your start time. Game points for 5 love. 27 minutes on the clock and that was a deep return from Garone that Medvedev wasn't ready for. Yeah, he kind of rolled the dice a little bit there, didn't he? And just got some impact through the court. But the trouble is that these moments are glimpses, aren't they? And they're sort of fleeting moments. They're coming and going and it's just not enough consistency in that kind of play. And he's just not getting anything for all his hard work that must be quite dispiriting after a while. Game points for five love in the first set. Medvedev inside the base. And now he comes for a little hesitation, plays the backhand volley. Oh, ho, ho, Garone is going for him. And again, he protects himself, but again, he can't. And Garone is not shying away. He's just heading it straight back to the Russian. Well, I think it was Coco Vandeweghe earlier, wasn't it? That said, you know, you needed to go at the body of the opponents. Yes. You know, why not? And that's exactly what Garone does here. He doesn't hold back. And I wonder whether that might just fire up Medvedev even more. Sometimes it's not such a good idea to do that. But it might have woken the crowd up a little bit. It's sort of <laughs> given them something to, to be entertained by. Medvedev can be quite stubborn. So we're either going to see him coming forward on every point now to say, right, you can't beat me. Or he's going to retreat to the baseline where he's more comfortable because Garon is taking no prisoners when he's got a target at the net. Absolutely not. There was a sort of sense of urgency about that last point, wasn't there? Well, I might have wound Medvedev up a little bit. Medvedev going for a really big second serve there. Ended up double faulting. Break point for Giron. He had a break point in the previous game on the Medvedev serve. Wasn't able to convert this to get one of the breaks back. Missed first serve. Medvedev doesn't like being aimed at at the net, apparently. Medvedev with his double-handed back and just places that ball up the line and the sliding into the court, into the net, goes Garona and it's juice. Just a solid point down break point for Medvedev. Very strong mentally. And that roar from Garona, he's down his box's end and he stares towards them. Puffs out his cheeks, resets himself as Medvedev goes about his business at the far end of the court, gathering his balls, twiddling them in his hand, tucking one in the left hand pocket. Puff of the cheeks, and he's ready to go at juice. Miss down the tee, takes one step inside the baseline, Medvedev back into position. Half an hour on the match clock, second of the night session matches, and a second double fault. Well, if Garone wants to know the secret of getting under Medvedev's skin in this match, it's aiming at the Russian's body when the Russian comes forward to the net because it has worked and he's a little bit rattled. Still comfortable, Medvedev, at 4-love, but 
rattled. Breakpoint opportunity number two in this game for Giron as Medvedev thunders that ball off the serve. Giron defending, but a lovely angle from Medvedev. Too acute for the American to get anything on, and the breakpoint saved. Yeah, and that underlined that stubbornness of attitude, didn't it? That last point once again, facing another break point, but just not holding back, going after that forehand. Not Nothing passive about the way he hit that one. Hit with a real purpose. Oh. Misses served down the tee. A couple of double faults already in this game from the seventh seed. So down the tee again, stepped in, took it early, Groen. Groen has to scamper back to the back end, he's on the defensive, he's on the back foot, the Russian into the corner, too good. And a game point for five, love. So a chance to move himself to within a game of this first set, Daniel Medvedev, finalist for the last two years in Australia. Medvedev just adjusts his shots. Oh, there's a little, there's a little bug on the court, but wonderfully, Garone encouraged it to leave the court, and the ball boy scooped it up and took it to a happier place. We've seen them crunched before, but this one is still alive. Game point for Medvedev. The forehand not deep enough from Garone, who doesn't get enough on that. He's trying to take the pace off, not give Medvedev enough yeah. pace, but Medvedev finds the angle. A little okay. smile from Medvedev to his boxer to say, yep, that's how you do it. And a clean sweep of the first five games. He may have had a smile on his face. Gilles Sivara, no expression at all. But the ooh and the ahhing is because we had a little close call shot of Medvedev just nicking the side edge of the line. So I don't think he's totally happy at the moment, Daniel Medvedev, but if he looks at the scoreboard, it should make him a little bit happier. If you are just joining us, just some names of players. Uh, good morning, nearly good afternoon, should I say. A few players who have gone through today. Coco Goff has set up a second round match with Emma Raducanu. Other winners, Jessica Pagula, Maria Zachary, Rafa Nadal and four over Jack Draper. Victoria Azarenka over Sofia Kenin. Straight sets for Tsitsipas and for Sviontek. Yannick Sinner came through against Kyle Edmund. Last year's finalist, Danielle Collins, had a win. And that was three sets against Kalin Sky. So pretty tough. Francis Tiafo coming through and adding their name to the second round draw is British number one, Cameron Norrie, who booked his place with a straight set win over Luca Van Ash and spoke to David Law after his win. Yeah, I didn't know too much. I was watching watch some matches um, and challenges from last year and he had a really good year. Last year won a lot of matches um, and I knew he was a good junior winning the, the French Open juniors. So um, yeah, I knew, knew what to expect. He had a, a really good backhand um, and yeah, it was a quick turnaround for me coming from, from Auckland and and yeah, I, I served for the first set twice and didn't wasn't feeling the ball as well as I would have liked but um that kind of happens is just being in so so early from so quick from from Auckland and <clears throat> and yeah I was able to to relax a little bit and and play a joke in the, in, in the second set and really took it to him and and um managed to hold on to my serve in the third I know it was a, a pretty difficult end to the the Auckland final after you got yourself in a winning position how long does that take to get over i mean did was it the next day you, you're back to normal yeah i was i was disappointed but i think all credit to to um richard he played um better than me towards uh, down the stretch and i didn't really do too much wrong so that's how tennis goes sometimes i was i was pretty disappointed with that but for me it just doesn't change too much i want to uh, I think just makes me me hungry and want to get get that title one day. But no, it was it was a good match from him, and and I was hitting the ball really well in Auckland, and I was I was playing some good stuff, so I was enjoying it. Cameron Norrie speaking a short while ago, the British number one with David Law, who came through in straight sets against Luca Van Asch, talking about that Auckland final he lost to Richard Gasquet. Back on the Rod Laver Arena, Marcus Groen is serving to stay in the first set against Daniel Medvedev. He's love five, it is 15 all. The backhand off the return from Medvedev, who switches the backhand cross court to the backhand of the American. They keep trading these backhands for Medvedev, switches around and goes inside out the forehand. Up the line goes Groen, down the line goes the Russian. Backhand flick over the net from Groen. Oh, Groen coming to the net. 
Medvedev backed off a little bit. He's been hit too many times already by the American, so he stepped back and Garone takes the point. Yeah, you sort of feel as if he's going to have to come forward a lot more, isn't he, Garone? I think he's having more success when he is on the front foot and when he's looking to make things happen up in that part of the court. And certainly he's made Medvedev a little bit riled by it. Won two points from five at the net, Medvedev. Four from seven, Garon. Garon now at 30-15. The American reaches up, winds up his five foot 11 inch frame. Oof, that was a laser-like return from Medvedev. He draws the error, levels up, and he's now two points from the first set, Daniel Medvedev. The close call replay being shown. Actually, it wasn't that close. Really wasn't close at all. 30 all. First serve clips off the net and goes long. It's an opportunity for Medvedev. He's still standing a long way back on the Rod Laver Arena. Serve down the tee. The backhand's in play to the backhand of Grona. Pushes it through the middle of the court. The backhand cross court very deep from Medvedev. Even deeper from Grona off the backhand. And now switches the American to the forehand. Up the line goes Medvedev. Cross court backhand goes Grona. 30 all love five. Medvedev with his backhand goes cross court and deep to the backhand through the centre. Medvedev is trying to hold his ground but being pushed further back. He's on the attack here Grona. Can he bring up a game point? The backhand place from Grona. Swiss cross court from Medvedev. That was brutal from the Russian for set point. Point. Sensational backhand. Couldn't have hit it any better to the baseline, deep into that forehand corner once again. But look at the movement from Medvedev getting out wide and sending it back with interest. That would be quite a shock. Set points for Daniel Medvedev for a bageled first set. Five love, 30 40. Garone reaches up and serves that wide and misses. So a second serve for which Medvedev will look to try and close out the first set. Drops it short, backhand cross court, lasered into the corner, the backhand placed up the line for Medvedev. Forehand switch cross court to the service line. Grown with the forehand, pushes it deep, it is too deep. And that is a clean sweep of the first six games for Daniel Medvedev. 37 minutes on the match clock, Annabelle Croft, and he gets the job done against Marcus Garone. Six love. Well, it was pretty ruthless, wasn't it? I mean, it sort of was a little bit more entertaining, perhaps, than the scoreline looked and showed. If you were just looking at that, you'd say, well, that was an absolute whitewash, which it was. But they did have some extended rallies. They had some longer exchanges. And we saw Giron trying to do a few different things out there. But it would have to be really demoralizing sitting down at the end of this change of set. A lot to think about for him. We're getting a good look at the stats here on the big screen. The, the uh, crowd, I'm sure, have a chance to look at them as well. But uh, not much difference in the service percentage between the, the couple of players. Three aces for Medvedev. Eight winners to just three and very few unforced errors, just the eight, but 14. And a lot of those Gigi coming off that forehand side, weren't they? And you had to feel for him because he was trying to be aggressive, trying to sort of make things happen out there. And yet I just felt like the defensive skills of Medvedev were just too good. You can get in touch with us, hashtag BBC Tennis at Five Live Sport. Jolly has done that, and this is lovely, Annabelle. January is so brightened by the Australian Open that I get to listen to Gigi and Annabelle in the morning. Some much needed sunshine in this long, dark month. How oh, nice. It's lovely. We had snow this morning, <laughs> we didn't did. we? did. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I looked outside <laughs> and there were actually snowflakes coming down just in the window behind your head, Gigi, but now the sun is shining. You said it's snowing. I was like, come on, and it is. But we now have sunshine as I'm sure do you, David Law. You also bring sunshine to the radio waves. <laughs> Thanks very much, Gigi. Uh, we don't really, because it's oh. about, what is it, 10 well, o'clock at night at the moment? Oh, you know what, it's day <laughs> one. No, it's quarter to 11. But it you, is in the evening here, so have, all I can see is floodlights. You don't have daylight, but you're a lot warmer than us here who has sunshine. Shall we put it that way? Yeah, yeah. I think that that is true. It's fair to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, it's definitely well, fair to so say. you're picking up the reins for set two. Before they get underway, it, how are the other scores looking out and about? 
Yeah, things are just starting to come to a conclusion on the other courts now. We've just had Felix Auger Aliassime of Canada beating his compatriot Vasek Pospisil. It was a right old struggle. He was five love down in the first set, Auger Aliassime. He lost that set 6-1. He came back and he eventually won it. Needed two tie-break sets along the way in order to do that. But he's got himself into the second round. We've got a great comeback by Lorenzo Mazzetti of Italy. He was two sets and 4-1 down against Lloyd Harris of South Africa. But uh, Mazzetti has won the third and fourth sets. And he's now into a fifth uh, at the start of that one. Madison Keys is a setup against Anna Blinkova. And it is 4-2 to Blinkova in the second set. And we also just had a win for Wang Jinyu over the wonderfully named Storm Hunter. Which uh, I never tire of uh, telling people. Here on the Rod Laver Arena, we've got Daniel Medvedev, last year's runner-up, playing against uh, Marcus Garone, who's the man grunting you hear as you lurched for that ball. Now he's gone after another one, but that's an absolutely delicious forehand drop volley by Medvedev, who's won the first set six love. And as uh, Annabelle and Gigi were saying, it, it maybe wasn't quite as one-sided as that sounds in terms of there were some, a couple of really competitive games. But at the start of the second set, Medvedev seems to have even stepped it up a bit here. That is a love service game. And he just tosses the spare ball away. He's won seven games out of seven, Medvedev. And I, I really feel for Marcus Garone because I don't think he's playing badly. He hasn't won a game. Yeah, it's a horrible feeling, David, isn't it? As we said before, with just a packed stadium, you know, the first night session of these championships. And he wants to show this crowd what he's got. But at the moment, it's just not enough to trouble Medvedev. And I think the key was that second game, his opening service game in that first set, that long, drawn out, what was it, about a 13 or... 13 or so minute game and lots of break point opportunities, game point opportunities, wasn't able to secure it. And it's kind of gone a little bit downhill since then. And, and the way that Medvedev is now marching around the court, as you say, uh, David, he looks like he's got the bit between his teeth. He doesn't want to hang around out here. Yeah, he, he was actually sort of grinning up towards his support team at the sit down. I think that he knows he made a bit of a meal of some of the games in that set and and maybe was a little bit fortunate to get a six love in the end and uh i sense he's rather narrowed the eyes a little bit here in the second set and is refocusing and that may well spell bad news for garon although he is getting himself pumped up and has just hit an unreturnable serve and moved to 30 love I think if he does get himself on the scoreboard, he's going to get an almighty cheer out here. That might just kind of calm him down a little bit and uh, settle the nerves. Give him a bit of a boost. Yeah. I feel like he needs something extra. Tried to serve and volley there, did Garone, but hit a stop volley on the forehand side and it just hit the tape and then it dribbled back his own side and he's marching around trying to keep his spirits up. You can see that he's... Anytime things don't go his way, he tries to very quickly put them behind him. He's a strong guy, is Garone, with a, a black vest, sleeveless vest on. And he's got uh, a dark back-to-front cap on as well, as he serves a kick serve that sits up for Medvedev's hit with his two-handed backhand, which is such a reliable shot, that one. And he hits that shot again inside out with the backhand, but goes long, faded it to Medvedev but no no topspin on the ball and hence it flew long well he did well there Garon because the the depth of return of serve from Medvedev has been absolutely outstanding in this match and you know after serves the server normally wants to be on that front foot going forward with their body weight and he was having to go backwards to be able to hit the ball so he's done well to get himself into a game point position here and about Croft here with us on five sports extra watching Daniel Medvedev and Marcus Garon that's a big view isn't it David <laughs> it sure is I mean I think for the crowd there's a pretty healthy crowd still in here um, you know maybe 10,000 people still in these seats and I, I, do, I feel they're a bit sorry for him really they want to they want to see him do himself justice he's playing okay uh, but he's struggling on the scoreboard and he's just hit a backhand wide and Medvedev who hit a very flamboyant inside out forehand slice in the middle of that rally 
uh, very extravagant, but uh, he's won the point, 15 love. I think what's noticeable is just how much Garone is turning around and looking at his cam every single time he misses a ball. I would have just got a bug. I'm not quite sure whether he's already stamped on it, but it looks a bit dead, actually. And, uh, <laughs> now yes, I think. He's uh, trying to pick it up. And the ball kid has been, what a, what a lovely job. job for a ball kid to have Yuck, to do. Squished Don't fly. pick up a dead bug. <laughs> no, not very pleasant. Forehand into the net by Garone and uh, Medvedev accelerating through the gears again on serve 30 love well that's the difference isn't it between these two massive gulf of difference between the ability just to pull out that big serve and get the free point quickly motor through a service game and we've seen yeah. how much harder yeah. so quick between the points as well remember though isn't he i mean it, he's barely finished the stroke whether it's a winner or a, an unforced error and he's straight off to the ball kid gets the ball doesn't need three choose which one he just give me whatever one you got and then i'll smack it down for another winner like that well that in itself pressures the opponent that ability to set the tone and the pace of the game and he's playing it to his uh, pace isn't he and as you say it, it's just pressuring and Kyrgios is pretty like that isn't it even though we're not going to see him yes. in these championships but he really plays so quickly in between points and the opponent feel like they're trying to play catch up all the time yeah, I do find that quite refreshing, actually. I mean, the, the pace that this is going at, especially with, when you've got the Hawkeye live and no challenges, I mean, it, it does rattle along a bit more. And uh, Medvedev's held for two games to one. Madison Keys may find herself in a third set very soon because uh, Anna Blinko is 5-2 up in the second set. I'm curious, Annabelle, what, how you would assess the game of Medvedev right now based on what you're seeing. I know it's not the same level of opposition as he would have had in like a Grand Slam final a year ago or something like that, but how far away do you think he is from his best tennis, what we saw here a year ago? Yeah, it's a really good question, David, because you can never tell until we see him up against the very best. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment he's striking the ball really well. He looks like he's moving exceptionally well. The serve is potent, isn't it? He's winning a lot of free points, but it's difficult to judge against this type of opponent who's quite passive, really. Yes, he's tried to be aggressive at times, but on the whole, the way that he hits the ball isn't really putting Medvedev into any kind of doubt out here. He's not really putting him under enormous amounts of pressure or stressing him. So very, very difficult to judge where Medvedev at. We'll really only find that out when we see him up against a, a really quality opponent, somebody he's going to respect enormously, who uh, can really push him. And then you find out where those stress levels are at. As you said, if the fact that he's sitting down and maybe even smiling at his team, he doesn't feel that much stress out here. But, uh, yeah. and he certainly wants to, to to test himself against the very best. I know he gave an interview ahead of this championship saying, well, you know, he knows he's beaten Nadal in the past. He's, you know, he's beaten Djokovic before, but of course they've beaten him many, many more times and they have so many more grand slams. He's got a, a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, absolutely right. Novak Djokovic will be in action tomorrow night. Uh, that'll be morning UK time, so we'll be bringing you that match uh, in uh, coverage on Tennis Breakfast. Uh, Daniel Medvedev has love 15 on the Marcus Garone serve here, and Medvedev leads 6 love 2 1. So, trying to get the, the break if he possibly can. His draw, well, it could see him face Sebastian Corda in the third round, and Corda's been playing really well of late. Um, he reached. Uh, a final the other day and is a very smooth player and ball striker and he pushed Novak Djokovic all the way in that match in the uh, the fourth round section there's uh, there are players like Denis Shapovalov and Hubert Hercatch who I remember beat Dano Medvedev at Wimbledon a few a couple of years ago and then he's in the same quarter is uh, Medvedev as Rafael Nadal and Francis Tiafo as well. So it's not an easy draw, really, to be honest, looking at that for Medvedev. But first things first, he's got to win this one. 15 all, big backhand cross court from him, dug out by Giron, who's scampering to his right, lifting a forehand long. And the way Medvedev is just able to stand in the middle of the baseline and just direct.
he just orchestrates. Yeah, that's a really good description, David. And I think it's, it reminds me of what we saw and witnessed earlier with Sviontek, the way she can take that middle ball and just open up the court with it. And that's something you, are, you either have a possession for or you don't. And uh, he certainly has got it in abundance. Forehand hit cross court by Garon, and he's gone down the line with that one. He's at 15.30 here. Lebedev trying to set up a couple of break points straight away. Forehand inside out struck flat as a pancake. Just hits through the ball, doesn't bother about topspin. Ball barely clearing the net as it goes over as he hits another forehand off the back foot. He's happy to do this all day, you feel, Medvedev, as uh, Garon just keeps swiping away with his two-handed backhand and cross-court again. Backhand to backhand, they're striking these shots. Another backhand in the middle from Medvedev. Is anybody going to go down the line anytime soon? Backhand cross-court again, they're just going to do this all day. It's fine. Forehand cross-court now from uh, Medvedev and Garon next. And what does he do? What on earth can he do to win a point against this guy? That was 30 shots, that rally, Annabelle. Well, again, it's just a mental mini blow, isn't it? And uh, that is a lung buster of a rally. And as you say, it's like watching a practice drill backhand cross courts. And it's just so economical the way that Medvedev hits that backhand. Yes, it's a sort of a shovely looking shot, but there's hardly any take back. He kind of hunches those shoulders up and uh, very smooth, very short take back, but it's really economical and extremely effective. Serve and volley attempt from Garon. Lob lifted by Medvedev. Just long. Well, it's smart tactics, isn't it? I think he has to throw in some junk balls here just to try and unsettle Medvedev. He's getting very, very comfortable in these baseline exchanges. He needs to keep trying to, like, mix up the patterns of play. Give Medvedev something else to think about. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's he's not going to beat him just in baseline rallies. We've, we've just seen a perfect example of that. He can do it well, but the guy down the other end is one of the the best exponents of it in the world. Still break point, Medvedev. This for a 3-1 lead in the second set. He's a set to love ahead also. Crashes his back end down the middle of the court. And long goes Garone. And there is the break. 3-1. And he's very, very frustrated in front of us. And as you were saying earlier, Annabelle, he's, he's making a lot of contact with his support team, is uh, Garone. And I just think he... He doesn't really know what to do. Well, that's exactly right. I think he's looking just for assistance, isn't he? Because a lot of coaches will give their players sort of plan A, plan B. I'm not sure how many plans he's brought out onto court, but certainly the first couple aren't really working. And that was the sort of lockdown mode and just passive play at the start where he was just rallying and trying to get settled. Then we saw some more attacking style that didn't really work and getting to the net. And I'm not sure what else he can bring out into play. There's, I'm not sure there's enough tools in the, in the tool kit no i do think that they need to increase the volume on the hawkeye live calls i i so often get a little confused as to whether the ball's in or out because i don't have a line judge to look at with an arm outstretched or uh, palms to the floor and i'm listening out for the call and i i can't really hear it well that was a bit of showboating there from medvedev it got a bit of a an ooh and an ah from the crowd high return of serve and he did one of those skip and a jump just to hit that winner huge hitting by Garone. he's had enough now backhand cross court from him it's dug up by Medvedev and he's got another one oh what a shot from Medvedev on the forehand side on the full run he absorbed everything that Garone had got to throw at him and he still came up with a passive shot cross court on the forehand yeah, I think you're right David I think he's really had enough of this uh you know, patting the ball backs and forwards from the back of the court with Medvedev and exchanges. He just wants to try and get something more on it. But Medvedev keeps on coming up with answers and 53 minutes on the clock. And he's in danger of taking this two sets lead in under an hour at this rate. Yeah. I mean, really, this second set has been a lot quicker because in terms of the efficiency of the, the games, even though he's lost one, uh, he hasn't had a six juice game or anything like that it was one 13 minutes in that opening set he just hit that serve long 40 15 this for 4-1 having taken the first set six love this is five sports extra from the bbc australian open day one 2023 here's a backhand on the line from 
uh, Garone, then a forehand on the line, and chipped back by Medvedev, and he's forced the error, and Garone just doesn't know what to do. A backhand volley hit cross court that he netted, and then he threw his arms out wide, and I can understand it. That was a sensational bit of retrieving from Daniel Medvedev. Six love, four one. What scores do we have elsewhere, Gigi? Well, I can tell you that on the Margaret Court Arena, because they also have a night session, a little bit early, we saw Stefanos Sitspas go through in straight sets. He's the third seed. Madison Keys, who's part of that successful USA team at the United Cup in the lead up to the Australian Open. She's a 10th seed here. She has split sets with Anna Blinkova. Keys took the first 6 4, Blinkova took the second 6 3. So we're coming towards the end of the day, really, in terms of matches. I mean, what a day it's been. Action all over the place. Our focus early on was the British players who started. Well, unfortunately for us, they started early. Now, another match that's still going on out on court seven involves Lorenzo Massetti. David, the reason I'm interested in this is there was a big word search, an ATP word search that went around on social media. I don't know if you saw this. It had all the players who entered into the Australian Open in it, and you had to look at it, and the first name that you saw would win the Australian Open. I was thinking D, 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 find a D, find a D, and it was Massetti that jumped out of this word search. So, 17th seed Lorenzo Massetti, who's had a few injuries in the lead up, is now in a fifth set with Lloyd Harris. Not helping, but that was the first name, David, that jumped out, and I did it four more times, thinking about a D, never found a D, so Massetti <laughs> is my tip to win the Australian Open. Okay. And he's in a fifth Fantastic. set. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I, I kind of have said that I think Massetti will have a big year and, and I don't know you know be ra around, around 10 12 in the world at the end of it um, based mainly on how good he is on clay but um, that injury you, you referenced at the United Cup that didn't look too clever and uh, I'm quite surprised that he's managed to do as well as he has today to be honest anyway we'll see whether he can get over the line he's a breakdown 3-2 against Lloyd Harris who's uh, definitely gone the scenic route towards that win if he does get it because he was two sets of 4-1 up lovely forehand on the line from Marcus Garone who moves to 15 love great to see still so many people in the stands at 11 o'clock at night here They've already seen the world number one, Igor Sviantek, have a pretty decent battle on her hands against Yulia, Yulia Niemeyer. And uh, had to come from a breakdown in the second set, when it won it in straight sets in the end. Well, Garone just missing another forehand and being pushed backwards once again after serve, where he just wants to be on that front foot. And the frustration starting to show more more clearly serve that first serve delivery David down at 159 kilometers an hour yeah he's he's a strong guy but he's not tall there's no huge whiplashes there on the on the serve at the moment there's not he's definitely lost a little bit of speed on that but uh, he's won another point so 30 15 here is correct serves onto the backhand side will Medvedev be able to keep his focus all the way to the finish line here and be ultra efficient that's what he'll be looking to do as he moves to his right and hits the forehand on the run and now he'll hit a backhand cross court it looks so easy that backhand stroke the way he hits it but the forehand's scooped cross court and wide by Medvedev and he looks a bit irritable oh, that was so much better from Garone wasn't it really changing the direction really getting some uh, oomph behind that backhand much flatter stroke down into that deep into that corner on the forehand side of Medvedev just getting on top of the rally again and there's been so few times where you felt like he's been in charge of the rallies forehand return cross court by Medvedev this is game point for Garone just to get his second game on the board in the entire match but he's netted a backhand 30, 30. he looks incredibly stressed doesn't he every single point you know it's becoming high value for him and i think he's almost starting to feel a bit embarrassed out here he just wants to yeah. get up on that scoreboard and you know he's making gestures after every single point it's just stress levels incredibly high yeah because he couldn't be trying any harder and it's just not working 
back and return down the centre by Medvedev. Can Giran get himself a second game on the board in this match? He'll hit his two-handed backhand down the line that Medvedev will reach and scoop his forehand and Giran nets. He's, he's really trying to muscle the ball over and yes. put even a bit more on it. And Yeah, I think also, David, it feels like he's playing completely the reputation down the other end of the court and that every ball that's coming across has got the name Medvedev stamped on it, you know, and the, the <laughs> difference in ranking. And, um, you know, he's missing balls that against any other opponent, you know that he wouldn't be missing them. But uh, the stress, I and mean, that's what tennis is about, isn't it? It's that psychology that goes into with the, the opponent that comes out onto court. Yeah. That's what I thought was so good about Jack Draper earlier on today. As a backhand chip cross court is hit by Garone and it hits the net. And this is an advantage to Medvedev again. You know, he played Rafael Nadal, the defending champion, his hero when he was a young lad. 22 Grand Slam titles and Draper won a set and pushed Nadal in the third as well before his body eventually started to break down. Four. Forehand return not required from Medvedev on this occasion because the uh, serve clipped the top of the net. The seagulls are overhead as a chipped forehand return down the middle is struck by Medvedev. He's trying to get 5-1 up here in the second set. Hits his forehand down the centre again. It's so deep. This hitting. Oh, what a shot by Medvedev. Inside out backhand right from the centre of the court. I'm watching it from behind him and it went from his body diagonally left and it barely cleared the net, Annabelle, and it dropped on the bay on the sideline. Oh, what a, a shot! <laughs> it really was extraordinary, and also so difficult to read what he was going to do with this. As you say, it was so close in. He tucks his arms into his body, and then just finds the angle, just sort of uh, casually moved his footwork out of the way to create the space. I mean, a, an amazing shot, 30 kilometres an hour that last winner. And I, I like the body language of Medvedev afterwards. We saw it in slow motion, him just going, oh, that was a bit good, wasn't it? Yes. Six, love, five, one. He leaves. Love, 15, he's just gone for an extravagant drop shot and he's hit the tape of the net. So uh, a bit of showboating starting to happen for Medvedev now as he runs around his forehand to hit his backhand, which is an unusual sight in tennis. We tend to think of people running around backhands to hit forehands, but that's how good the backhand of Medvedev is. Um, and uh, he extracts an error with it. Nice yeah. deep shot and uh, 15 all. I just feel like Garone has just lost all confidence at the back of the court. He's not trusting the ground strokes whatsoever. Pulled off that last one. And of course, a big server now down another ace so every service game is just enormous it's like looking up a mountain for Garone isn't it 201 yeah. kilometers now that last one and that mountain is getting ever steeper I mean this is just flawless serving now from Medvedev he just steps to the line and uh, rolls his arm over hits the line asks for another ball and repeat Here's his backhand cross court. This is set point for a two set lead. Backhand chip cross court by Medvedev. Skims one down the line, does uh, Garone. And then he hits the two handed backhand cross court. And Medvedev just absorbs it like he has everything else. Forehands long by Garone. Medvedev holds. Medvedev wins the set 6 1. He's done that in about 26 minutes. And he leads 6 love 6 1. And it's pretty awesome, Annabelle. It really is. I mean, he's just not troubled at all. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's enough coming out of Giron's racket that can really hurt him, as we keep saying. And that's almost been evident from the very beginning of this match. But, um, you know, I think also incredibly important for Medvedev, if he wants to try to win another Grand Slam here, is to be efficient in a match like this, where they started late. He's the second night match. You know, Spiontek didn't even start her match till 8 o'clock in the evening, local time, and it went quite long that one but if this was suddenly you know a five set thriller for instance and he was going to bed at like three or four in the morning that can really hurt your chances can't it going into a tournament deep you just want to be as efficient as possible so he's almost made up the time that it would have been had it been a, a normal start to the evening session and he's going to get to bed if he gets through this next set fairly efficiently and uh, it won't hurt him too much I don't think no I think you're right that's pretty awesome for a couple of sets there from Daniel Medvedev. Can he carry it on, Shishi? 6-love, six 6-1. Six 
and uh, hard to imagine a way back for Marcus Garo. I know, thank you Dave, I was going to say yes would be my answer. I have actually put the ATP word search puzzle on our little WhatsApp group. I know that's quite a niche thing to say, but I want everyone to look at it and the first name you find is the person who will win the Australian Open. Massetti is still in, but he's a breakdown. So Annabelle, I'm going to give you some time. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at it right now. The first name you see, and you can't... I found Sitsipas. Did you? See, we can't yeah. verify this. <laughs> well... Are you not, you're not I happy with that? Were you looking for it with a D as well? Were you doing what I tried to do? <laughs> no, I just I just had a look about. Okay, so we've got a Sitsipas. I, I saw Sipas, and then I thought, oh... Oh, I then you were sucked be... in, weren't you? Got Sitsipas. Yeah. Annabelle is we're Ooh, still looking. I found Zverev. Ah, uh, well. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Coming back from a bad injury. Yeah. Massetti's got break back point. I'm now going to get very engrossed in what's taking place out on court seven. No, I won't. But we will keep an eye on that because it's the only other match together with Madison Keys that's on court. We, I might see if we can get that put on the um, Twitter feed so people can have a look. Um, it's, it's like a just mass of jumbled up words. Yeah, and, and if you try and find one, you won't find... I think the second time I found Chorich and the third time I found Tiafo. Mm. I did not find Garone, I did not find Medvedev. And poor old Marcus Garone. So, Annabelle, if, if you're allowed to sidle up to him, you're his coach, on his bench, what can you say at this stage to Marcus Garone to give him any sort of hope? I think you just say, you know what? You just have to enjoy it and need to block out. You have to try to focus the mind completely on just what he can control and just enjoy this moment and free up. Because at the moment, I don't think he was really enjoying it. This is much better. But how good does it have to be just to win a point? Well, at least he's smiling after that one. That might just free him up a little bit. But you're right, it does have to be very, very good. And it's so good to see him when he's up on the net. That's where he's had most of his joy, to be honest. I can't think of too many occasions where they've played some long drawn out rallies where, you know, Medvedev has nullified any kind of serving and then they've played the exchanges and, you know, you're pretty much going to put your money on Medvedev to win any of the baseline exchanges. And I can just see his uh, coaching corner saying more of that, you know, keep going, more of that. He's got game points to get his second game of the match on the board. It'd be the first game of the third set. He's moving Medvedev from side to side. Medvedev on the stretch of the backhand side. Garon goes inside in. Ho -ho! Back edge of the baseline from the American gets his second game of this first round match. There's a fist pump, there's a roar from the crowd, he's on the board. Our producer Kat says that her first name she found was Nadal. Now we've got no one to verify that everyone is indeed finding the first name and telling us, but we've got a Nadal, a Sitsipasana and a Zverev. I've seen where you saw your Mossetti. Mm, yeah, it's sort of the top. Yeah, it stands out, doesn't mm. it? I still haven't found Djokovic and I've looked at it quite a lot. Four all though, Massetti has broken back, but to be honest, if he goes five sets and he's injured, I'm not sure he's going to last much longer. But there's only three matches left on day one. Because where are we? We're 10 past 11 in the evening in Melbourne, still warm. It's going to be even hotter tomorrow by all accounts. Medvedev cuts the serve out wide, comes in on a short return, comes forward to the net, the lob is up from Giron. Oh, it lands in. So Medvedev has to readjust, play the forehand, tries to attack off the forehand side. He just wasn't set for that. Giron only pushes it long. It's a little awkward, doesn't it? The way Giron hits his forehand, it doesn't look that smooth. It's sort of a, I don't know, it just looks a little bit sort of front on when he hits it. And I don't think he's completely trusting himself. And of course, anything technically that's a little tiny bit jittery, under immense pressure will uh, falter. One two punch for Medvedev. 13, Do you, I haven't asked your predictions, but have you gone Djokovic in the men's? Yes, mm. I have. I yeah. haven't found anyone that hasn't. No, it's difficult to go against him when you consider how he finished last year in the ATP finals in Turin, just taking on all the top opponents and top performers of the year and just beating, you know, five matches, all of them. It was just a phenomenal end to the year. And the way he started this year as well. Just wonder about this hamstring mm. niggle that sort of delayed or rearranged his practice today as Mervedev scoops up and slices that forehand and flicks the forehand cross court. He's got the American on the run who goes deep. Duron is so far back and stretching. Mervedev's on the baseline. The ball goes long 
from the American and Medvedev wins the point. So it certainly no. puts a big question mark there. But then again, I remember that match he played against Taylor Fritz a couple of years here early on. And we thought, well, there's no way. It was early on in the tournament. He had that abdominal sort of pull. And we just thought, well, there's no way he's going to finish this tournament. And he ended up winning it. Extraordinary. It was a little tear, wasn't it? Yeah. And he kept off. Game. Played Medvedev. through the pain as Medvedev aces down the tee. So an hour and nine minutes. You are, I don't know, after midday, does tennis One breakfast, do we still call on. ourselves tennis breakfast? Well, maybe heading into sort of lunch time. Lunchy br brunch, brunch yeah. time. I think so. People would be very disoriented if they're waking up and I'm saying, welcome to tennis breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> they like to say afternoon, it's Monday. I like brunch. Yeah, it's nice. You're making me rumble. <laughs> 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 well, I don't think you have too much longer if, if Medvedev keeps on this trajectory. But can Marcus Garone swing a little bit freer? As Annabelle said, can he try and enjoy himself out there? It's tough. It's a, it's a big court. It can be very lonely out there when things aren't going your well. But as he skews the ball, Medvedev, you hear a little... You don't often hear a lot said from Medvedev. No, he's a very difficult character to read, isn't he? We know when he's in a really foul mood and there's been occasions when his coach has actually just walked off the court, hasn't he? I think actually even one time at the Australian Open a couple of years back, he's coped with a lot, but he does try and work hard to try to keep his temper in check. Yeah, Jill Savara just got up and left. <laughs> Everyone was like, where's he? You're a brave man, but they are still together. Been together for a while. They're based in Nice in the south of France. A fluent French speaker is Daniel Medvedev and spent a lot of lockdown in Nice with Gilles Savara and his wife Daria so he could continue to practice. I think he's been a great influence on him actually. I think there's enormous mutual trust there and uh, I think Javara has been incredibly honest with Medvedev and I think Medvedev said a, a few years ago didn't he that he respected that honesty and he could easily have just taken it got irritated and said right well you know I'm parting company and I'm off but he actually decided to take on board what he was saying and really work with it so I think he really uh, really it's almost like a brotherly relationship isn't it yeah you do seem to be very close I like the fact there's never too many people in the Medvedev mm. box so coach and agent there's a couple more but it's not just filled to be filled yeah I agree with you just very simple you know nothing beats just hard work what's going on trust in in the work that they're doing and the the tactics and the information that's coming and you know they're just a good team say that there's just a couple of coaches in the Garon box 30 15 on the American serve one all in the third set it's a little bit looser 40, from Medvedev 15. quite so uh, locked in as he has been throughout the course of this match I mean it's been a swift match an hour and 12 minutes but that forehand just sailing long this will give Garon a lot more you know uh, I don't know positivity I think after what's been happening out here Broke the top 50 for the first time last year, Marcus Garone. Comes forward to serve and volleys, but he's passed on the return of serve by Medvedev. 14, he didn't know an awful lot about that, Marcus Garone. The ball flashed past him. Yeah, not enough pace on that serve. He sort of went for a, a more acute angle, sliced around the outside of it, but just didn't get enough width on it or enough pace through the court. 146, that last serve, and that was kind of straight into that strike zone. So comfortable to not so comfortable at 40-30. Forehand into the corner. That's the screech of the semi-splits from Medvedev on the defence. Inside in. Wins the point, Garone. And he keeps his nose in front. You mentioned, Annabelle, that he was looking at a mountain to climb. And the mountain is still there. But for now, just keeps himself with the scoreboard lead in the third. Well, I'm pleased for him that he's done better in this set than the previous two. And he's just not looking at, across at the camp as much as he was. He's just playing with a bit more freedom. I think he's enjoying it a bit more. And Medvedev obviously has just lost a little bit of that intensity that he had. So that's uh, also helping just a little bit. Madison Keys, Anna Blinkova, that's on the Margaret Court Arena. Keys is the 10th seed. They split the first two sets. Keys was a break up, but Blinkova has just broken back. So it's two all, it's love 30 on the Russians. So the only other match involves Lorenzo Massetti. So many matches have taken place today. Busy day as you'd expect on the first day of the Grand Slam. And I think, because I've now lost him, that Massetti, oh no, here he is, five all in the fifth with Lloyd Harris, the South African. So he was serving Massetti to stay in the match. He did so, so it's 5-all, 15-love in favour of the Italian. Tomorrow, we're with you from 5am. 
picking up the Matteo Berrettini Andy Murray match I mean we talked about that Annabelle being a shocker of a draw for Murray but Berrettini won't have been delighted to see Murray's name no. come out alongside his own definitely not and Murray was talking quite positively in that uh, pre tournament press conference about he feels that he's in a way better state to go into that match than he has been previously and for all of the Grand Slams lately he just feels better prepared he feels like he's moving better than he has done which of course is very very key to the way that he plays his tennis so that's going to be a cracker of a match yeah it is I hope you can join us from 5am in the morning and then tennis breakfast as it does will start you if that is your regular wake up call we will be with you from seven we will carry on with the murray match if that's still going we've got dan evans in action and we have the night session to bring you together with a host of different voices views analysis and so much more method f one two fifteen love first grand slam of the year everyone's normally in a good mood in Australia. It's like the beginning of term. <laughs> it is. That's a good way to describe it. And I think also just the atmosphere of the slam. And all of them are different. They all have their own qualities and they're all absolutely fabulous. But uh, as it is the start of the year and the sunshine, the kind of barbecue smoke coming across, oh, yeah. there's some sort of Aussie bands um, around. It's just got a very <laughs> chilled out, very Aussie feel to it. And I think the players really, really enjoy it. And as you say, they've all kind of, they're, they're much fresher, aren't they, at the start of the year? They're just itching to get out there. They've had to see everyone. Yeah, they've had their time off. They've uh, had their pre-season. They're just itching and raring to go. By the end of the year, like six past, you just want to go and sit on an island on your own. You not speak to anybody. Mm. But this time of year, you just want to see everyone. Two all, blink of an eye, Medvedev, little fist bump towards his box, closes out for two all in the third set. So the pressure back on the American. We talked about him coming through the, the college system. He's worked really hard. Annabelle spoke earlier about the had surgery on the right hip and the left hip. That took him out of the game for a big chunk of time, but he's worked his way back. He's got himself fit and, and as I mentioned, broke into the top 50 for the first time last year. Hour and 16 on the clock though. This has rather flown by. 20 past 11 at night. Yeah, he's also had some really decent wins. I mean, I, I would, when, whenever we talk about Norrie these days, I think any win over Norrie is a very good win. And he beat Cam Norrie uh, in Vienna last year. The indoors. Ow. He's also beaten uh, Schwartzman. He's beaten Fritz in Dallas last year. You know, he's had some very notable victories. Beat his biggest win was Berrettini at the Paris Masters in 2020. Yeah, that's a very big win. He can pack a punch, Giron. was definitely nervous and slightly unsettled at the start. And that's the game of Medvedev. Medvedev's defence, though. He just took a slight breath, Mev. Oh, no, no, no. The overhead for Marcus Perez. Oh, that is such a shame. Played the point beautifully. Mm -hmm. Even his camp mm -hmm. are holding there head in their hands after that miss and not easy looking up into a night sky I mean he couldn't have played this point any better and uh, he was in position for the overhead but he slightly snatched at it and you could see that ball was just dropping towards the throat of the racket didn't really commit to it he was a little bit cramped up with his body you can see when we're watching the replay how he let that ball drop Oh, all that hard work he's thinking into the net and off he goes again 30 15 to all he's got to keep his nose in front wonderful plays from, from Medvedev to turn the tables on this point into the corner goes the rush he's now on the stretch and he switched it Garoni just pops the ball over he draws Medvedev and he plays the ball and finds the court well, that's another point where he's turned it around from an extremely defensive position. Garoni's starting to hit that forehand a lot better there's more potency on it it's doing more damage down the other end Medvedev having to work a little bit harder for the points at the moment. Puffing a bit after that one. And he just didn't do enough with that little short, sort of dinky drop shot attempt. And Medvedev too quick up to it, very fast off the mark, and then shoveling that backhand. Coming up the back of the ball. I've got a thumbs up from coach Gilles Sivar in the box. He's wearing a very tight necklace around his neck, isn't it? It looks it's a like bit a tight. It's like a choker. Well, it is, but it's kind of choking him, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's tight. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe it's so difficult to watch Medvedev at times. It's just his own form of pain. He sort of one distracts the other. Thirty <laughs> Medvedev goes cross court with his forehand. Forehand cross court from Garone up the line, placed by Medvedev. Runs around the backhand, goes inside it. Oh, that was deceptive, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought that forehand. It is deceptive the way that Medvedev hits his forehand because it's, as we said, it's got this sort of curly whirly backswing and. Uh, you know, the way it has some height over the net, a lot of spin up the back of the ball, he whips it up and he kind of uh, jigs his body in a different direction to try and control that. Sharon screaming into his left palm. Yeah, words not to be repeated. Break point, Medvedev, to go three to up in the third, serve out wide. The backhand's in play, cross court, cross court to cross court. The backhand's it is their favoured exchange. Keeps it going, Medvedev, keeps it on the backhand side, drops it a little bit shorter, Groan, who now swivels and goes inside in, very deep with the forehand, Groan. He comes in to attack the inside forehand, but he stays back on the baseline, inside the baseline now. Inside, this is good from Groan. Then he cuts under the volley. He gets there. Oh, but the follow-up volley from the American is in for the net. He works so hard. But the defensive skills of Medvedev once again coming to the fore and he breaks for 3-2. Three two. Oh, such a shame. So demoralizing for him because uh, I think that's the best tennis that we've seen from Garone in that last couple of games, to be honest. And much freer, more potency, hitting the ball as we know that he can and uh, really starting to make headway with it. And as I said before, making Medvedev work so much harder for those points. And just a shame, you know, up in that last game, really should have been leading as he sits down at this change of ends but of course with the serve that he's been up against being unable to break the Medvedev serve the fan, uh, died, huh? oh he's just said the fans died oh. well that's not something you want to have when you're sticking an air conditioning unit tube up your top but it has yeah. died <laughs> David Law how's the air conditioning in the commentary box it's all right, yeah, I can't complain. And uh, I'm currently uh, keeping a, a close eye on Lorenzo Massetti and <laughs> Lloyd Harris because it's an epic. Two sets all, six games all. Harris was a breakup in the fifth set, then he lost it. Then Massetti went a breakup in the fifth set, 6 5, and Harris has broken back. So it's 2 1 now in the fifth set tie break, first to 10 points, clear margin of two. It's just what we want on day one at the Australian Open. It might just knock one of those two out for good if they come through this. And Madison Keys has got a break. Yeah, they she? are in the third set. 3-2 it is for Keys, but she's serving at juice. It's anything but straightforward for Madison Keys. When have you ever heard that before? <laughs> And they are the only two matches together with Garon Medvedev left on day one. So Medvedev looks to consolidate his break. But Annabelle, as you said, this is some of the best we've seen from Garon in the entirety of this match. Oh, definitely. I think he's just finally got comfortable in this match and just sort of forgetting about score lines and trying to not embarrass himself out here on Broadlaver Arena and try to entertain this crowd. He's just started to sort of zone in and just play uh, and take care of what he can do. Aaron, 22 minutes on the match clock. It's just very hard to get anything on the serve of Medvedev when he's serving like this. Medvedev soaked in sweat. Short hair swept to one side, plastered to his head. Yeah, he sort of like wipes it across, doesn't he, with his left hand and he sort of smears his hair back towards his... Well, I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of a sweep smears over, isn't it? Hair. Yeah, It's like a comb over but with a hand. It's like a sweep over. As he comes in on the attack, Garone, on the acute angle, slams it into the corner and makes it impossible for Medvedev to retrieve. Well, he doesn't go for that headband look, does he? Because he obviously he sweats a lot up there and everyone's hair gets plastered to their head when they're sweating like this. But he tends can't to use his left hand. a headband. No, no, I can't. Or a baseball cap. No, no. We have the back to front baseball cap for Garone, whose hair's not that long, but it's probably soaking up the sweat. It's 30 on, he goes long, unforced error from Medvedev. Break back point. Yeah, he would have seen this coming. Just a little bit of a concentration lapse here, but also coupled with the extra pressure that's coming down there from the opponent. It's not quite as easy a ride here. He knows his opponent's level is creeping up all the time. Yes. Talk about slamming the door shut. Didn't look stressed by that break point, did he? <laughs> Medvedev, that kind of attitude of just uh, go for broke. 
Nothing passive about spinning that serve in. A ninth ace of the match for the seventh seed, world number eight at the moment, Daniel Medvedev. Still a very healthy crowd inside the Rod Laver Arena, considering it's coming up to 11.30 in the evening on a Monday. Yeah. Just watching uh, Medvedev's second serve, I've been keeping an eye on this ball toss, Gigi, but it's very far out to the right. He sort of tends to slice right round the outside of it. Very difficult to control that one down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost reading that play because he knows that second serve is going to go out wide there just because of the ball toss, but uh, wasn't able to control it. Medvedev. A couple of bounces the ball needed, tosses the ball up, serves down the tee, wrong side of the line. Well, a very enthusiastic Medvedev fan thought that was an ace. Garone comes in, takes this early with the backhand, but then he retreats behind the baseline. Medvedev just doesn't get out the way of the ball. Yes. Garone's camp are getting a bit more excited, aren't they? They're sort of really encouraging from the sidelines. His coach is just sitting just across to his right-hand side and uh, leaning over the balcony and just doing words of encouragement. Serve out wide, deep return, forehand up the line from Medvedev. Medvedev keeps it on the forehand, goes inside out to the backhand, cross got clips off the net, back Garone's own side and he cannot believe he just didn't get a little slither of luck. Well, it just feels like a wasted shot again, and he knows it. And once again, it's about, you know, the pressure of what he's got to do up against somebody like Medvedev, as highly ranked as he is, and the reputation he has. It's just a, a wasted shot. Game, Medvedev. If you don't take your chances when you get them, Medvedev will do that. Huge serve down the tee Medvedev to consolidate and lead by, there we go, confirmation, 4-2, 11.30 in the evening, one hour, 26 on the match clock. Well, he looks about as relaxed as he could possibly look right now. Medvedev, a semi-smile on his face. He's kind of looking like uh, shrugging his shoulders. He's not stressed at all, is he? He knows this match is nearly done and dusted. Big serve, short return. Garone comes in, finds the angle. Medvedev gets there, needs a follow-up volley. Medvedev gets there. He's covering it, Garone. But that, again, is the defence of Medvedev. He is deceptively quick, isn't he, for his body type because he's very tall and gangly, long levers, and yet the takeoff speed is phenomenal. And again, just to get his body in the right position to make that backhand and make that volley awkward, and then covering so much court so quickly. Served down the centre from Marcus Garone, the 29 year old, sitting at 56 in the world rankings right now. Forehand sits a bit short from Garone. He's pushed back into his backhand that drops short. Forehand whip cross court. The squeaky shoes of Medvedev draws the error from the American, and it's love 30. Once again, love you can't underestimate 30. how good that return of serve was from very far back in the court and then shoveled straight down the middle of the court, but very deep to that baseline and just nullifies everything and then resets the point. And then he just covers the court back to reposition himself because he is unusually far when we always talk about Nadal being far back for return to serve he's as far back as Nadal I think I mean he's so far back there he's almost back alongside the commentary boxes alongside the sports extra commentary box a little huffing and puffing every now and then from Medvedev who wipes his face with his shirt I mean that saves a bit of time rather than going to the towel boxes Thrown down the tee, fault called. And Medvedev will march his way towards the baseline for the second serve. In a very comfortable position, lost just three games to this point. Medvedev who chops and that ball back and then he stretches into the backhand and then to the forehand side. But he could see Medvedev coming out the corner of his eye. He overcooks it, Garon, and his break points down. Yeah, I think you're right. He could see Medvedev moving that direction. And I think that's also what's been impressive about Medvedev's play today, the anticipation of what his opponent's going to do with the ball. He's always kind of slightly ahead and moving in the way the ball is going. Reads the, the game so well. Break points for 5-2 and to serve for his place in the second round. Ball girl scoops up the loose ball as it's netted off the first serve. Garone ready with the second serve, kicks that high, sits up, bounces. Now backhand cross court flat, really flat on the angle at 
absolute stunner off the backhand win cross court for the winner from Daniel Medvedev, who is now a game away from the second round. Well, that was absolutely breathtaking, that last backhand. I mean, he did not hesitate on that whatsoever. He sensed the opportunity, wanted so desperately to break to try and uh, get to finish this match, potentially in this next service game. And the way he stepped in on that backhand, and his timing is beautiful, isn't it? I remember the very first time I watched him play, it was actually in Eastbourne a few years back. And I was watching him, I didn't know too much about him back then. And it was like, wow, this guy hits the ball so smoothly. It's so effortless the way he hits it. And uh, that's always the key, isn't it? Where you don't look like you're putting too much effort in and yet that ball rifles through the court the way he does. And very rarely looks like he's mistiming it or you know, mishitting the ball. It's just beautiful. It's like, like we said, metronome is a good way to describe it, but that backhand was absolutely stunning. And it takes him to within a game of the second round. Just the three matches left at Melbourne Park on Day Nine. One. Tennis Breakfast with you every day of the championship. So I hope you can be with us. You can set your alarm to set it for 7 a.m. and you'll be safe. But we've got a couple of earlier starts today and tomorrow due to the British players in action. So if you want to get up a little bit earlier, 5 a.m. for Murray Berrettini be a cracker yeah that's going to be a cracker looking forward to that one serving for the match Daniel Medvedev in February last year was the world number one he held on to that ranking for 16 weeks a lot feel that he never truly recovered from events of the Australian Open last year against Rafa Nadal and Annabelle we talked at the top about his comments following that and it, it did seem to have an effect on him Definitely. I just thought he, yeah, he was very honest about it, but he was obviously incredibly upset at the way things finished up last year here in Australia. And I would just love, I hope somebody does ask him about that in the press conference after this match. You know, where are you at now compared to those comments you made about the little boy that was dreaming of being a pro, that a part of that little boy's dreams had, had gone and died and, you know, that you were just going to play for yourself and your family now and you weren't going to have those same dreams. Dirty love. Two points from the win. Plays the half volley off his shoelaces. Medvedev and Garone. Oh, just about manages to curl that. No reaction from the box, but the crowd enjoyed it. Yeah, well, they've hung around, haven't they? I mean, despite the fact it's been a very one sided competition, this, you know, I think they still really enjoyed watching Medvedev play. You know, watching a former US Open champion, somebody who's been in the finals twice here. Backhand cross court from Medvedev looking to bring up match points. He goes drop shot, but you heard the no from his mouth as the ball left his racket. Looking just to get out of that point as early as possible. Don't see too many of those off the racket of Medvedev. But quickly back into position, wipes that from his mind, resets himself. Two points from the win. I tell you that Lloyd Harris has beaten Lorenzo Massetti in three hours and 49 minutes. 10-4. In that fifth set, first to ten tie break. Medvedev, ooh, he just wasn't settled, excuse it. Where did this come from? Love up. He's cruising through to the finish line, suddenly just lost his concentration. Madison Keyes has won, suddenly turned it around, turned on the afterburners, 6 2 in the third, so this is the final match. And this will complete day one at the Australian Open. Inside the baseline, back and return cross court from Garon, who stretches, but perfect placement from the Russian. Well, he can make the game look so easy, can't he? Just the way he sets up, massive serve, gets the ball a little bit shorter, and then strikes that into the opening space. Bolt. And as you keep saying, oh, gosh, that was an interesting shot. He did a full 360 and managed to connect with the ball there Giron. I'm not sure he knew too much about it crowd enjoyed it Advantage, oh, double fault from Medvedev no one really knows what's going on there was a gentleman who seemed happy in the crowd because I think he wants more tennis break point Marcus Giron and a loose first serve from Medvedev does he go as big on the second Serve comes down, kicks up high, backhand cross courts in play, backhand placed up line from Medvedev. Medvedev with the forehand, whips into the corner, the forehand of Garone looking to get the break here, but he cannot get high on the ball. Great placement from Medvedev, moving Garone from side to side, and it's juice. 
Yes. Languid hitting, wasn't it, there from Medvedev, but opening up the court ever so subtly, but each time getting that ball further and further away from Garone, who was just playing catch up with the, the rally. Juice number two, five, two. Six love, six one, five, two for Daniel Medvedev. Oh. Beautiful use of the court off the serve out wide. One two punch match point. Well, it's been incredibly efficient, apart from one or two moments and lapses in concentration, which is always going to happen over the course of five sets. It's never going to be always perfect. Oh, 33 minutes on the clock. I mean, that's phenomenal, isn't it? He will be very happy with this night's work. Daniel Meredith, he can close it out. The second set. Oh! That's uh, the second set was even bigger than the first yes. set on that occasion. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's doing here. And uh, it's interesting how on the ad side with his second serve, the ball toss is way straighter. He's going for more of the kicker Thank with you. the serves. Whereas on the juice side, when he's going for those massive second serves, his ball toss is well out to the right. You know it's going to be a slice out to the forehand. So what he does this one. Oh, audible obscenity. Miffed. So the serves are probably just going to get bigger. That was an opportunity for Giron. Doesn't take it. Match point number two. Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? Because that ball toss was much straighter. He went for a ball that was kind of like, well, flatter trajectory through the court, but a, from a more straight ball toss. I think he needs this to. Uh, is he going to get a shake of the hands at the end of this pair? Yeah, I think he needs this match to be done now, Medvedev. He's just at boiling point. Massive serve, gets the return. Forehand, there it is. One two punch to finish it off for Daniel Medvedev, two time finalist in Australia, and a comfortable night's work. Just over an hour and a half on the clock, and Medvedev wins through in straight sets for the loss of just three games. Now we see the smile from the Russian. I think he'll be very happy with how he has got his Australian Open campaign underway. Oh, no question about it. I mean, extremely efficient. I mean, beautiful movement, I thought, from the back of the court, just the way he absorbed some of the more aggressive rallies that were being thrown at him early on in this match. But he never really looked troubled, did he? He hit the ball beautifully from the back. Serving was fantastic, the way he motored through those service games. I mean, we saw some sensational shot making into the corners. I mean, looked a little uncomfortable after the net, I have to say, but uh, Garone, well, looks a bit for more, and I think he was just very, very stressed out there, but that's a lot to do with the opponent he was up against. He's got a nice stash of towels there. Did you see that, Martin? Yes, yeah, he had his fat. The tournament towels, look at him, he's got a little pile oh, of three. Right. Hasn't used them, they're pristine. Mm. They're going to be re-gifted, mm, I assume, you. for someone. Look yes. at that. Yes, he's snuck those, isn't he? Didn't use them, just no. pristine. So can I have some towels? And off he went. <laughs> Maybe he deserves them. Got three games against Medvedev. It was... It, yeah, it was it was tough out there, and Medvedev was was in his comfort zone throughout. Yeah, he was, and it's a perfect start for him, isn't it? He? he said he wanted to get off to a good start in this uh, Australian Open. He wants to be challenging the very best and put himself up against the likes of Nadal and Djokovic to try to win yet another Grand Slam title. And I, I think he thinks it's a possibility. So he needs to be uh, efficient, and that's exactly what he was today. In the opposite side of a draw to. Novak Djokovic in the same quarter as Daniel, Nadal. it's nice to see you. Happy New Year. Time. Haven't seen you yet. Um, but I saw great. some great tennis tonight from you. Wow, that was impressive from our eyes. But I want to get your take on it. What did you think of your level here in the first round of the Australian Open? Well, first of all, I'm also really happy to see you during the match when uh, I was leading two sets to laugh. I was thinking to myself, is Jim uh, here to, to take the interview from the winner? Because I haven't seen you yet. So I was like, I'm sure he's here. So happy to see you. And uh, yeah, really happy with the match. Uh, Marcus is a tough opponent. And uh, uh, to beat him with this score uh, in the first round of a slam is, uh, is great. And I'm really happy about my level and looking forward to next matches. Excellent. And you've been excellent at this tournament the last couple of years. A finalist, two years running. What a Take you back to last year. You had an amazing run out to the finals. What are your memories of last year's Australian Open? <laughs> A lot, huh? <laughs> Crazy matches uh, against Nick, against Felix, uh, against Cressy, and of course against Rafa. So uh, I want to say great memories, but uh, definitely want to have uh, better ones uh, this year. Well, you're going to create some more soon. A couple, uh, couple of days.
You'll be back. You'll play an Aussie in the second round. That happened to you last year as well. This time it's against someone you've never played before. John Millman, a veteran. I'm surprised you guys have never played before. Your thoughts on taking on uh, Aussie John? Yeah, it's true that in kind of uh, five, six years that I'm on the tour, we never played. Uh, he's a great player, especially here in Australia. I remember uh, he almost beat Roger, beat Roger in the US Open when Roger was, I want to say, kind of at the top. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's capable of playing some great tennis, so I'm going to have to, to play my best also, and uh, hopefully people are going to see a great match. We look forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a wonderful pleasure to see Daniel Medvedev back here in Australia. Well done. A little way from Daniel Medvedev. It's quarter to midnight in Melbourne, and that is the action done for the day. All the matches are completed. We had five Brits in action, two march on to the second round Emma Raducanu, and Cameron Norrie. We lose Harriet Dart, Jack Draper, and Kyle Edmonds. For Annabelle, that's it. Day one done.